Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, I'm John, this is many a true dot of Wilkama. To Fallout Tale of Two Wastelands, which is... Uh, oh, this thing is incredible. If you've never heard of this project before, I'm about to blow your minds. Because Fallout Tale of Two Wastelands uh, is a mod that blends together Fallout 3 and Fallout New Vegas, two of my favourite games of all time, into one single game. A single world that a single character can explore, travelling between the DC ruins and the Mojave as they wish. Just, just take that in for a second. That is bloody incredible. Now, you might well be wondering how such a thing could possibly work, given Fallout 3 and New Vegas are actually mechanically fairly different from each other. So basically, and to massively oversimplify, this game ports Fallout 3 into Fallout New Vegas retroactively applying all the cool new stuff that Obsidian added into the Fallout universe back into Fallout 3. But let's focus on what that really actually means. That means that I get to explore and do a full playthrough of Fallout 3, one of my favourite game worlds of all time, but I get to do it using the mechanics and game systems of Fallout New Vegas, my favourite game of all time, and once again, Bloody hell. But this also lets me put something right on this channel that's been mysteriously wrong for a very long period of time. You see, this channel is probably, to many of you, best known for Fallout. And my most watched video of all time is a feature-length discussion about how much I love Fallout 3. And despite that, there has never been a full Fallout 3 series on this channel. Okay, there's been series before, but Kill Everything was greatly truncated for comedy and roleplay. Whereas You Only Live Once, well, there I was just running between plot critical stuff. I overlooked a huge amount of the content of the game. There are areas, characters, missions, secrets, so much in Fallout 3 that has never been on this channel before. And today, we're going to fix that because uh, here's what I am setting out to make. I am going to make the most detailed and thorough playthrough that anyone has ever put on YouTube. That is my goal. I want even those of you who love this generation of Fallout and know it like the back of your hand to come away learning new stuff about this marvellous game. Now, there's a lot more we could discuss here, but you know what? We'll cover it when it comes up. Let's just dive in, shall we? You know, I've been playing video games for a good 30 years, and I still think this is the only one I've ever encountered which begins with you being born. And we'll be playing as a girl because, well, the perk system has changed. It's had to in order to accommodate Fallout 3 and New Vegas. We'll get to that when we level up, but uh, yes. Let's just say Black Widow just opens up so many more useful, cool interactions than any of the other comparable perks. Hi there. I'm your daddy, sweetheart. Daddy. You're going to need a name, aren't you? Your mother and I have been talking. What do you think about... And I would say, given how much wandering we're going to be doing in this series into every hidden corner of the DC ruins, and not just there, but over in the Mojave as well, just occasionally disappearing to go and wander on the other side of America for a few weeks to time, what could be more appropriate than being the lone wanderer from Vault 101? And yes, indeed, despite this being Fallout 3 and the Gene Projector, I'm pretty sure that's the default female face for Fallout New Vegas, so go on then, we'll go for that. It's a big world out there, honey, full of all sorts of people. What about you? What kind of person are you going to be? And here's where the New Vegas properly kicks in. That introduces traits, because we're playing by New Vegas rules all of a sudden. Speaking of which, probably yes, just in terms of uh, skills. Uh, the single most efficient combination of traits you can take is uh, skilled and good natured. That just gets you uh, so many skill points. But, 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 to be honest, thinking about it... There's no shortage of skill points in this game, especially when we've got the entirety of the DC Waste and the Mojave just stretching out in front of us. So I'm going to focus on the traits that give me benefits I can't get from elsewhere. In particular, and I'm going to regret this, but... Built to Destroy. 
3% bonus to crit chance. Now that, that is huge. As I say, I'm going to regret it when all my weapons break and I can't do anything about that, but screw it, I'm taking it anyway. And then a hot blooded. So yeah, below 50% health and gain 15% more damage. Lose some agility and perception. Perception's really not that important. Agility, that's a bit of a downside. In fact, a fairly large one, but... 15% damage. I'm not saying no. Let's give it a go. I'm going to regret both of these picks, by the way. You're just James? Catherine? Also, yes, James? my mum's dying. Sorry, I got distracted by picking traits there. We need a doctor, not a dead man. This one's on the house. Fail to meet my expectations now, and there will don't be Don't look straight into the light. James and his cheery chatterbacks. May your future be right. Something you get used to the field. Just like home. Come on over here, sweetie. Come on. Walk to daddy. And there we go, we're now a year old and in the vault, and uh, to be honest, I'd say, you know, we're a pretty bloody athletic one year old. I mean, how many babies uh, can jump up onto an adult sized chair by themselves? This is uh, honestly very impressive. And now we're left to our own devices to, yes indeed, break out of the incredibly not secure playpen. Dear Flipper dear, this was just, this was terrible parenting. He didn't even attempt to lock this. I was definitely getting out of here. Anyway, let's build ourselves a character, and this is going to be a little bit on the tricky side. Because, uh, bear in mind, we're playing by merged Fallout 3 and New Vegas rules here, meaning a whole bunch of perks have changed. I don't really know what the right requirements are, so... Oh, bloody hell, what are we gonna do here? I'll tell you what, I wouldn't mind a bit of extra charisma, because I do know for a fact, while we're in Fallout 3 at least, I'm not sure whether it changes when we go to the Mojave, we're playing by Fallout 3 speech rules. So, uh, yeah, you need charisma as well as speech. And to be honest, I would not mind a charisma of six, because I wouldn't mind animal friends. That's a really fun perk. Sacrifice a bit of strength and perception. We could boost intelligence, agility, and luck up. I wouldn't mind a little bit more intelligence, you know. Okay, we can boost charisma down the line if we need it. And endurance too. Okay, you know what? That's probably actually, you know what? I wouldn't mind the... Oh, bloody hell. I wouldn't mind luck of eight. Okay, now it feels more appropriate to be seven, because luck. But... If I've taken Built to Destroy, I really should go pretty all in on the luck build. In fact, you know what? I'm doing it. Beautiful. Now, Liam Neeson's about to come in. He's going to tell me I'm a little explorer. But what happens if I... Yeah, there we go. Get back inside. There is no evidence I left the pen. <laughs> you are quite the little explorer, aren't you? All right, you can't get anything right. past Liam Neeson, apparently. <laughs> The experiment to prepare. We prepare to survive. Surprise! Stanley, you turned the lights on too fast. You blinded the poor kid. Happy, Happy birthday. birthday! Happy birthday! Can you believe it? She is growing up so fast. Happy birthday, honey. I can't believe you're already ten. I'm so proud of you. If only you Congratulations, mother. young lady. I don't have to tell you how special this day is, do I? Down here in Vault 101, when you turn 10, well, you're ready to take on your first official vault responsibilities. So here you are. As overseer, I hereby present to you your very own Pip-Boy 3000. Get used to it. You'll be getting your first work assignment tomorrow. <laughs> Enjoy your party. You're only 10 once, so have fun. And there we go, our 10th birthday party. Brilliant. You know what, I quite enjoy Andy doing this. I just feel like this will be a really enjoyable birthday for me. Like, if a giant robot just went up to the cake and then using a buzzsaw blasted it into my face, like, that's a birthday you're not going to forget. Fun fact, by the way, you don't actually have to mingle with your guests at all. If you just wait long enough, your dad gets bored and the party ticks over to the next level. So you never have to deal with Butch and the Sweet Roll. If you don't speak to the right people, it just never happens. You can also completely skip a martyr by just not walking over there. Just uh, move around the room on this side and uh, a martyr will never speak to you and never give you your Grognak comic. Meanwhile, yes, after your dad does open the door, follow the overseer upstairs. There's an extra voice line. It's really easy to miss. Enjoy the party, sir. 
Bah! I only showed up because Amata's friends with the brat. Give them a few more minutes, and then I want that place cleaned up and everybody back to work. Sure thing, sir. And then he just uh, leaves the area, and you start heading downstairs, though. Uh, you, buddy, Officer Kendall, there's something fun we can do with you, too. Might take a few attempts, because yes, you can get caught, but he's just got two Stimpaks on him. There we go, got one of them right there. So yeah, you can just have an extra stim pack if you want. I mean, I guess at the bare minimum, the advantage this does give you is, uh, yes, I've now got access to medicine for if it comes to a fight with Butch. So, uh, all right, just keep my distance from a martyr. There is something I actually want to check here. Old Lady Palmer, you give me the sweet roll. Here you go, a nice sweet roll that I baked for you just this morning. And it's all for you. You're the birthday girl. No sharing required today. Think about so all right, get oh, that in one. play. And now, Birthday. yes, butchered activated just a moment. Why yeah, you we don't want your cuties, or something with right, your little friend Amada. No girls allowed. Oh, now there's interesting. I've just learned something myself here, which is uh, apparently, even though I've got the sweet roll and the cake has been destroyed, uh, until you speak to Amata. Butch won't actually attack you. That's just the order of play for this scene. Well, in that case, Butch, today you don't get to punch me in the face at all because, uh, yes, indeed, I'm just kind of curious. If you never get given your birthday gift from a martyr, which is the, uh, yes, Grognat book, does it never exist in the future? Because you can find it in your room at the beginning of Escape. So I'm just wondering if it's still going to be there, having never been given it during this scene. Anyway, downstairs to do a bit of target practice. So, got ourselves a gun and got ourselves a target range. Go on, shoot something for me. Well, you very literally just asked for it. Let's try out my new lovely, yes, criticals and whatnot. Now, pop you in the back of the head. Sneak attack crit and also... Okay, never-ending sneak attack crit because apparently he is not interested in turning around. Brilliant. Sadly, that won't do. The game is going to insist that, uh, yes, three targets are taken down. And after that, one rad roach. Though, uh, I swear this rad roach has ended up a tiny bit uh, tougher as a result of uh, the various rebalancing and whatnot that went into blending together Fallout 3 in New Vegas. You may also notice, by the way, that, uh, yes, there is not iron sight aiming on this gun. This gun will have iron sight aiming when I'm an adult. Just for some reason in this section... It doesn't, despite the fact, you know, this is New Vegas and all, so uh, take you out, buddy. And then, well, let's just say I've got one final surprise to make this the best birthday ever. Get a picture of me with a big game hunter. You see, I've decided to, uh, yes, make sure we set up Over Dad here, and Jonas as uh, both on about one hit point, give or take. So, uh, okay, just, I'm going to be pushing the wrong button for Vats for a while, by the way, because they do keep changing it round from uh, game to game. So, uh, you, then over to you. Make sure we get this. So, one and two. Oh, yeah. Double kill. Straight there. And doesn't matter that everyone's unconscious. The photo just gets taken regardless. Best birthday ever. And thus begins Future Imperfect. Time 16. And it's goat time. And bloody hell, we've got some stuff to talk about with the goat. The goat is... Very interesting. There's also our first bobble hedge right here. You can pick this up later and escape when it's actually, yes, lying knocked over on the desk, which is hilarious. But we'll grab it now. Not least as it's now doing something a bit different. There was, in all fairness, a slightly ludicrous number of skill points available in Fallout 3. So during the merging, that's now changed. The bobbleheads appear to be providing unique perks instead. So, yes, indeed. It makes me 10% less likely to become addicted to chems. So I don't know what all these effects are going to be. This is going to be a lovely surprise for me. Still, before we get to the goat, yes, there's the matter of Amanta's bullying. And this mission is, okay, it looks very simple. But something really weird goes on in the background during this mission. Because the setup is super, super basic. Stupid tunnel snakes. Immature assholes, if you ask me. Why won't they leave me alone? It's not my fault my father's the overseer. I don't care about their stupid gang. Can you talk to them? Maybe Butch will listen to you. Please? So, plain and simple, she wants to not be bullied anymore. And there are broadly two solutions with a couple of sub-solutions built in. 
Option number one is either using a violence or speech checks to get them to leave a march alone. And there we go. Butch is the leader. You're just a follower. I don't follow anyone. Wally Mac is his own man. And the Tunnel Snakes is where I belong. W why? You think Butch is in charge? Is that what people are saying? Because it's a load of shit if that's what they're saying. And there we go, we got a speech check. So, obviously, because I haven't done the goat yet, I can't have tagged speech or anything like that. So, with the charisma off, what did I settle on? Five or six? About there. Yeah, it's about a 50-50 shot whether this works or not. What? What kind of shit is that? No one talks that way about Wally Mac. He's not the boss of me. Nobody's the boss of me. I'm out of here. We're done here. Done? Get these idiots we're away from done. me! I say when we're done. Don't know who put you in charge. I say we're done. Let's go, Paul. Are you sure? Butch? Um, okay. Whatever you say, Wally. Tunnel snakes rule. Fine, let's go. I was done here anyway. This ain't over, daddy's girl. I'm not finished with you either, twerp. And there we go, our mantra is saved, and uh, you may have just noticed there, the game said I've picked up a bit of karma. And it is not kidding. At the start of this mission, you have zero karma, alright? The scale is minus a thousand to plus a thousand. So you start right in the middle on neutral. How you complete this little mission is supposed to basically set you on the path to being good or bad. So the game gives you enough karma to knock you into good if you resolve it in a martyr's favour, or bad if you resolve it in more of an evil fashion. Meaning, as a result of that, the game just gave me 260 karma out of neutrality into good, which is at 250. But hang on, let's just go back in time for a second, because uh, the opposite is also true. Also, fun fact, uh, if you speak to Butch, the way he responds to you is a function of how you dealt with him in your birthday. So if it came down to fisticuffs, he actually basically treats you with a modicum of respect, implying, yes, you two have been tangling physically for a while, and she doesn't really want to do it anymore. Yeah, what do you want? But because I didn't interact with him in any way during my birthday party, he's pretty damn neutral. You see, the alternative evil solution is to help Butch with the bullying and let him know what Amata's particularly sensitive about. So if you tell him she's sensitive about her weight... Her weight, huh? I can see why. You're okay, Pipsqueak. Now run along before you get hurt. Accordingly, that drops you by 260 karma. Now, just to be clear, in terms of uh, evil acts that you could do in the game, enslaving somebody by slapping a bomb collar around their neck, that's minus 100. Burning Harold to death, that's minus 200. But telling Butch that a martyr is somewhat sensitive about her weight, that is one of the top 10 most evil acts you can take in the entire game. It is wild. Travelling back in time once more though, yeah, yeah the easiest option can just be skip the entire encounter. You only get the massive karma raise or fall if you engage with this mission at all. I'm just going to take the neutrality and not engage in the slightest. Well, you made it. All set for the goat? Trust me, it really isn't that bad. Just something everybody has to go through. So yes indeed, the goat. I love the goat. The goat is... Fascinating. I suspect, you know, the vast majority of you, the vast majority of the time, just skip straight to, I don't have to do the stupid task, and then you just select the tag skills that you want. But the goat's actually got some really fun stuff buried away in it. So today, we're going to sit the goats. Go away, you stupid tunnel snakes. So there we go. As a result of saying the goat is ready to go, the bullying just resolves itself, and it's goat time. So, as you've probably guessed in the past, the way the goat operates is each of these answers corresponds to a particular skill. The skills end up tagged to the ones you selected most often. And whichever skill was the absolute top, that gets converted into a job that you get assigned. But, fun thing, not all jobs and not all skills are equal during the goat. Some skills have more answers available, meaning those jobs are way more likely to be assigned to you. So for example, over the course of the goat, medicine and explosives have four answers associated with them, whereas unarmed, repair and lockpick, only two. Which is kind of unfortunate because, yes, this means you're much more likely in the goat to be awarded the job associated with medicine and explosives just by virtue of probability. 
Which is a shame because they're the worst jobs in the GOAT. I don't know whether this was an intentional joke. But yes, medicine corresponds uh, not to being a doctor, but instead uh, to being a medical test subject, presumably being experimented upon uh, by your own father. And explosives uh, is waste management specialist. So uh, yes, you kind of get the two least pleasant sounding jobs uh, the most often, whereas the careers it's harder to get because the skills shot less in the GOAT they're the more fun and exciting sounding careers, like, you can be a jukebox technician if you get repair, but it's almost impossible to get because it means you have to make sure all your other answers are divided between the other skills and you don't accidentally have the same number of answers for skills that show up a lot more frequently. This first question though, this one's nice and simple, so obviously you've got science, that one is speech, that one is melee weapons, that one is sneak. Alright, nice and simple, but we're all going to play a game together now, which is guess what skill this answer corresponds to, because some of them are truly kind of wild. Question three. You discover a young boy lost in the lower levels of the vault. He's hungry and frightened, but also appears to be in possession of stolen property. What do you do? So... This one is a little bit on the interesting side. Top is obviously speech. Confiscate stolen property. Maybe not 100% clear, but that's unarmed because you're going to like, you know, physically take it off him. Number three is sneak, I believe, because that corresponds to pickpocketing. But number four, this one's just um kind of weird. It's the only answer in the entire GOAT that doesn't correspond to anything. I don't know if this was just mistagged at some point and it ought to apply to something, if it should do, I'm not immediately sure what it was supposed to be, but yes, this is the only one that has no associated skill. You've made one of the Vault 101 baseball teams. Which position do you prefer? Okay, this entire one is pretty hard to bloody uh, figure out, but Pitcher is in fact explosives. In the same way that, like, you know, you would uh, throw a grenade. Catcher... Okay, this one you would never guess in a million years, but the actual skill that gets tagged by Catcher is Big Guns. Though, yes, speaking of that, you may of course be aware that uh, Big Guns isn't a skill anymore. We're using the Fallout New Vegas skill system, so I'm not sure what that would now correspond to. Presumably something else, possibly one that makes more bloody sense than Big Guns ever did, but yeah, not 100% sure what that's supposed to be. Designated hitter. Okay, that one's easy. That is melee. The bottom one I enjoy, because it's kind of a joke, which is you don't want to be on the baseball team, you want to be on the soccer team. And that one corresponds to unarmed, because in soccer, you wouldn't be using, like, a bat or anything. Though, if you actually get unarmed as your most frequent option, the job you get assigned is the baseball little league coach. So if you specifically say you don't want to be on the baseball team, you are more likely to be assigned as head of the baseball team. So, all right, nightmare dystopian goat decisions. Your grandmother invites you to tea, but you're surprised when she gives you a pistol and orders you to kill another vault resident. What do you do? And this is the one that this mods had to change, because option number three in question five used to be ask granny for a minigun you want to make sure you don't miss. So that's gone missing, and I'm guessing one's actually showing up in its place, because that is, yes, cooking cyanide into a meal, that's going to be survival. A skill that was added by New Vegas and now exists in Fallout 3 as well. So screw it, we're absolutely going for that. Though while we're on this question, back to everybody's favourite game, what skill is this supposed to refer to? Yes, throw your tea in Granny's face. That in fact is supposed to refer to explosives, of all bloody things. Now, maybe I've been making my tea wrong all these years, but never once has a cup of tea exploded on me. Question six. Old Mr. Abernathy has locked himself in his quarters again, and you've been ordered to get him out. How do you proceed? This one's a fun one, by the way, which is, yes, option two here. Trade for a cherry bomb, then blow the door open. That's the only answer in the entire GOAT that gets you two skills, not one. That represents a point for barter, because you traded for the cherry bomb, and then explosives, because you used it to blow the door open. So yeah, that's the only one that's actually worth two. However, down at the, uh, the bottom over here, walk away and let the old coot rot. 
Guess which skill that one's supposed to represent? Because, um, yes, for some baffling reason, that's repair. I have no idea how that corresponds to repair, given you're literally not doing any repairing, you're walking away and not bothering, but yeah, that's a repair point for some reason. The next couple of questions are very, very simple, no particular surprises, very easy to figure them out, but uh, yes, I'm going for one particular job, actually, because one of them is just delightful. Question nine. You decide it would be fun to play a prank on your father. You enter his private restroom when no one is looking, and... Here we go, the last episode of uh, Try and Figure Out Which Bloody Skill This Is Supposed To Represent. So, uh, manipulate power wattage on his razor so he'll get an electric shock the next time he shaves. Now, uh, repair strokes me as an obvious one for that. Maybe energy weapons, because, like, you know, wattage is mentioned. Uh, no, it's lockpick. And I have uh, no idea why that might be, but uh, yeah, very, very confusing. And after the final most important question of all, question 10, I think I'll go for overseer option number two, we get a response. I'm really hoping I've got the one I was aiming at. According to this, you're slated to be the next vault chaplain. God help us all. That's what you get if your most tag skill of all was barter. It's one of the, yeah, slightly more confusing jobs, given uh, I'd have gone for maybe, I don't know, a quartermaster or something. We're in a vault, there's got to be a stockpile of food and water that gets handed out. I feel like that would have made a lot more sense. But yes, for some reason, uh, during the GOAT, barter is associated with being a priest. Most others, however, they make a fair bit of sense. Though, I will say, slightly confused that uh, small guns get you tattoo artist of all things. There we go. Officially, we got survival, barter, and science as a result of, uh, yes, me taking the survival options. Now, I'm going to be detagging those, however. I'm going to be one of those explosive-using priests because, uh, yes, indeed, back in Fallout 3, explosives and big guns uh, were separate. Instead, they got merged in New Vegas, and it made it a much more usable skill. So, yes, all grenades and all big guns uh, pretty much all get merged into uh, explosives, uh, very, very nice indeed. It's a fun skill. We're going to be tagging that one. As for number three, because yes, I'm keeping survival. All right, I don't know how much cooking and eating of food there's going to be out in the wasteland in Fallout 3, but you can't select this in Fallout 3, so I'm inclined to take it, damn it. You know what? I'll take myself a bit of speech. Generally in Fallout 3, I just dump charisma down to one and don't even think about speech. Let's actually, you know, get access to all the fun extras uh, that speech gets me access to. So, a uh, bit of an unusual build. Uh, and if you hang around a bit, yes, you get to hear mysteriously about um, jobs it's physically impossible for you to get, but other candidates somehow manage to unlock, despite having access to the same test you did. So Butch, of course, gets assigned a hairdresser, or barber, as he insists, but, um, yes, despite that, it is physically impossible to be a barber. There are 13 jobs available for the 13 skills, though I guess in this version, probably only 12, because big guns and the hilarious associated job, Laundry Cannon Operator, is presumably no longer available. I'm finished here. Don't you want to find out what you got? Now nah, I already know what it says. Hardly takes a rocket scientist to crack that joke of a test. Well, I'll be damned. That little so-and-so. Why didn't I think of that when I was 16? You see right there, there goes a guy who's very good at what bloody skill does this answer correspond to? Even an A. That is the problem. He's safe now. Is he? Get so back what to work. Selfish and insubordinate. Wake up! You Come on, wake up! I'm not going to be around to hold your hand forever. Come on! You've got to wake up! And here we flipping go, escape begins, and with that, the game proper, it's time to get out of here. And also time to figure out whether, uh, yes, Amata ever got round to giving me that comic book. So my dad's fled the vault, vault security aren't coming to murder me, and Amata's let me know about a secret tunnel to escape via the overseer's office. Brilliant. Now, crucially, yeah, turn down the gun. She'll offer me a gun right now, better she has it. Makes life a bit simpler down the line. All right. I'll try to meet you at the exit. Watch out for security. Good luck. All right, here we go. Make sure we take everything from the room in particular. 
Only 10 stim packs. Same number you'd have normally. I was kind of hoping there might be 12, representing the extra two I stole back in the day, but uh, sadly, not. Now, okay, is it going to be there? And I think it was supposed to be. I think it isn't. If you don't bother speaking to Amanta during the birthday party, you never get the Grognak, which probably means that, that book now just doesn't exist in the game anymore. So, okay, not really so important for me. I'm not going to be using melee weapons much. I mean, to say that, right now, yes, I'm going to be using exclusively melee weapons. And speaking of which, say hello to the wonderful world of Fallout New Vegas combat, which is to say every single weapon has now picked up requirements, meaning, yeah, strength is now more important than it used to be. And on top of that, skill needs. So my baseball bat is going to be not really doing the job, but it is kind of my only option given my BB gun is absolutely terrible. Speaking of which, now I'm an adult and we're in the game proper. Iron sight aiming! Brilliant! Thank you, New Vegas. Other than that, before we go, make sure we take, yes indeed, the baseball cap. Plus five to melee weapons. Uh, that might be enough to get me up to the 25 I need for the baseball bat, actually. And yeah, don't forget to take any skill boosting armor. This used to be way more common back in Fallout 3. Like, uh, Fallout New Vegas, you find a lot more armor that boosts special. In Fallout 3, skill boosting armor seems to be more common. So uh, that there, not a bad thing at all. Still, here's what we're going to do. There is my new enemy, Officer Candle. Brilliant, but of course the rad roaches aren't going to be coming in. What I want to do is just, you know, let them do their own business. No trouble whatsoever. He's going to take a fair few nibbles from them. He's just retreating in this direction. No major problem. As soon as he actually takes them out. And to be honest, yes, I swear the rad roaches are tougher these days. And Excuse me. I swear you were supposed to be arresting me. There we go. Buddy. Buddy, buddy, buddy. I want to weaken this guy, but I don't want to finish him off. Because I want to set up something that you can do in this area that's bloody hilarious. There we go. He's down to pretty bloody weak. So now put the bat away and start running. You gotta help me. My mom's trapped in there with the rat roaches. Bit of an awkward conversation given I'm on the far side of the grill, but yes indeed. We're going to help her out, but I'm not going to do it myself. Instead, uh, I'm going to empower Butch to do it. Because I picked up the BB gun, I can hand that over to him. Then uh, he'll go take out the rad roaches. Though, I'm going to go and assist too. But a funny thing happens if you do it this way, which is uh, Butch becomes your temporary companion. So, bat back out. Priority number one, of course, is yes, save his mother from the rad roach, is understandable. So, we're just going to be taking care of that business first. All right, one last rad roach goes down. This should be enough to finish you off. And with that done, Butch now has no more rad roach targets. And that means he's now my best friend. And he's going to start shooting Officer Candle. And I'm pretty sure... There we go! Officer Candle just got... Where the bloody... Wait, hang on. Where did... Where are the rad... Wait, hang on. Why are there rad roaches? Does anyone know why there's suddenly more rad roaches than we were expecting? But there we go. Officer Candle gets taken down by book. She can't just do it even if Officer Candle's at full health. But with a BB gun and factoring in Officer Candle is wearing armor, it's gonna take a while. Hey, I know it isn't much, but I want you to have my Tunnel Snake's jacket. Go ahead, take it. So that's one bit of clothing, but we do, of course, have uh, options because uh, welcome to New Vegas, where all of a sudden uh, we've got damage at threshold, or rather, we've got both. So uh, this helmet comes with a no damage threshold, uh, but it comes with some damage resistance. The armor, that comes with DT and some DR as well. Okay, just in case you don't know this, by the way, in Fallout 3, 10 DR means 10% damage reduction off anything incoming. In New Vegas, we went over to the DT system, where the armor rating instead gets deducted as an absolute number off incoming damage. Generally, therefore, DT is going to be way more effective in most scenarios than DR. Though, yes, in this blended version, armor's gonna have a both, which is going to make it much more interesting trying to figure out which is the best type of armor to use. Still, right now my DT is zero, and I'd say, yeah, a DT of two is definitely gonna be very useful, especially against, say, you know, rad roaches. Their tiny nibbles are going to be... 
No, seriously, why are there suddenly so many rad roaches? I swear, this is more rad roaches than... Oh, it was probably some rad roaches from this area. Got it, that's where they came from. And obviously on your way out to this area, yeah, if you didn't get it previously, last chance to grab the medicine bobblehead for quite a while, actually. And yes, indeed, doctor's bags, because we're playing by New Vegas rules when it comes to healing. So as a result of that, yes, limb condition, and if you want to properly sort out your limbs, you're going to be needing them, especially given there's another twist coming, yet. Now, ooh, the atrium. Okay, there's something really fun you could do here, but it's kind of tricky to pull off. When you enter this area, there are two people standing here. The Holdens, Mary Holden and Tom Holden. Their job is to die to demonstrate that yes, vault security are nasty and have guns. Tom Holden is going to run over to the left and try and escape the vault to follow James and he's going to be gunned down for his trouble. Mary screams, follows him, also gets gunned down. That's one way it goes. The other way, however, is you can go and murder the two people with guns. If that happens, they both run away to an inaccessible door and escape happily ever after, and you never see them again. They don't show up again when you revisit the vault later in the game, sadly. There is a third option, but it's kind of buggy and a hard to trigger, which is we want Tom to die. This puts Mary into rage mode. She's then supposed to die, but if we can take out the guards before she does, she then sort of freaks out and just hangs around. So we're going to try and activate Rage Mary. So just get over towards the door. The guards in question are right there. So Tom's going to get, there we go. Tom's about to get shut down. And now we're going to take out, I might need some stim packs by the way, because uh, bear in mind, these are New Vegas 10 millimeters that these lads are armed with. They hit a bit harder, and also I'm playing on very hard difficulty. So we need to take these lads down right now, and then I might need to stim pack too. Also, Vance defenses. There's Mary. Mary is in rage mode. Did we get Mary or is Mary? Oh, did Mary go down? We might need to redo this if Mary went down. I'm determined to get rage Mary. No, gosh darn it, Mary went down. Okay, we can do this. We've just got to take out both the guards before Mary manages to get herself killed. Here we go. This is looking good. We've got one guard down and we have got, yes, Mary in rage mode because when Tom dies, she attacks the guard. She just gets taken out while she's doing it. But if we can take these guys out, if I get a crit now, that might do it. There we go. That's you crippled. Come on, buddy. Down you go. And now, there we go. Mary pulls a gun and is now simply going to go and do her own bloody thing. Ah, though on this occasion, yes, it would appear she's just uh, disappeared down to the lower level. I have seen her go right up to the top and just hang out near the overseer's office. It's beautiful. Still, at least she did leave one gun for me. And yes, indeed, this is where things get um, interesting. Because uh, this is a 10mm as in New Vegas. But of course, it can't be worth as much as a 10mm in New Vegas. That would break the economy. So uh, all the guns have had to be rebalanced. They're like hybrids of uh, their New Vegas and Fallout 3 variants. So uh, I'm pretty sure this pistol is doing more damage than those guys would have done previously. And that's essential because in a world where, yes, armor can have a damage threshold, the damage numbers have to be higher, otherwise the armor would be overpowered and basically everything needs to be redone to make the game work in New Vegas. The amount of work and thought that's had to go into this is ludicrous. Ah, uh, yes, and just around the corner, this is why you let Amata keep the gun. Don't make me take that gun away from you, girly. Just hand it over. I sent easy now. No! Get away from me! Oh my god, Amata! What have you done? I mean, you've got to give her. She is good with that gun. All right, me shooting that guy wearing that arm with that gun would have taken way more bullets than she used. Then it just loot the place as we're passing by. Plenty of good stuff floating around in the security office. Brilliant. And as tempting as it is, don't kill the overseer. We're going to be needing him later when we eventually come back to say hello. 
Another crucial one on the way out, by the way. Jonas's corpse gets me. Yep, there's some glasses if you haven't found any already. That's just a tiny bit of damage reduction. Don't say no to 1% less damage. A stim pack and more skill boosting apparel. Never say no to that either. Oh, and a note from my missing dad, which is probably important too. Much more importantly though, yeah, Samantha, who's just uh, struggling a bit with the uh, weight of having just killed a man, she's happy to give you the gun now. And it's a good gun. Here, take it. I don't want it anymore. I don't know what I'd do if I still had the gun and my father came looking for me. I mean, honestly, you are really, really good at shooting people. The speech option's not wrong. Right, lock picking cracks open the overseer's door. You can, of course, if you want to, get various keys and passwords tossed about. We don't need any of that. I would rather, in fact, yeah, just help myself to a tiny bit of XP doing it by myself. And there's a lot of stuff here about the future of the game. So, yeah, the Gek gets introduced here, together with confirmation that, unfortunately, Vault 101 doesn't get a Gek. We don't have one present. And confirmation as well that, yes, indeed, at some point, the Overseer basically recruited Butch and the Tunnel Snakes to be his personal unofficial heavies. And plenty of evidence that, yes, the Vault has not just been unsealed before, it's been unsealed pretty much on the regular. They just decided to uh, hide it from the younger generation. Still, crack open the tunnel and we're pretty much ready to go. Activate switch, secret entrance to a vault entry points. Of course, yes, they locked up this area. That's what the guys with the guns were guarding. And crack her open, though, uh, yes, we are going to be needing that gun. I picked up just a second to go. There we go, a martyr's gun. Much better condition than mine. And as for a martyr who catches up with you at the last second, uh, come on, a martyr. Why don't you come with me? It's tempting, but my place is here. The vault needs me more than you do. I'm the only one who has a chance to talk some sense into my father. Listen, if you do catch up with your dad, tell him I'm sorry for, for you know, Jonas and, and my father and everything. Goodbye. Right, we'll revisit that in a second. Here come some security guards, but fun fact, they will not leave the vault. They refuse to. And they've also got batons, not guns. Meaning as a result of that, I can just put some damage into these idiots. And then all of a sudden, there's nothing they can do. They will never leave the vault. They don't dare step outside. So just, uh, yeah, line up some nice headshots in the old vats right now. Lovely. One a good bang. Second will do the job. But down he goes. And Okay, that guy gets some hits in. But a bat on versus his armor. Dear, oh, flippin' dear. You know what? These guys, uh, they don't get buried or whatever happens to people inside the vault. Presumably incinerated. They just get to sit out here and eventually join the other skeletons. With them dead, a martyr comes back. And yes, indeed, one more um, interesting thing we can do with her. Which is, uh, as soon as I get far enough from the vault door, it will close uh, and shut behind me. A martyr did just say she doesn't want to come with me. But um, there are ways and means, shall we say. You see, a martyr can't be killed. She also can't be aggro. She'll never actually attack you. So uh, if we just uh, very quickly line up a few nice hits on her. Lovely sneak attack knocks her straight down. Brilliant. We can now pick her up and carry her the same as we would any other object. Unconscious people are legitimate. Now, once she wakes up, that's no longer allowed. But if we just whack her a few more times, uh, just get her down. One more should. Uh, there we go. Bit of uh, bit of blood there, which is unfortunate, but that's fine. She's only unconscious and... I'm going to be honest, the original plan was to, um, was to carry her over there. At which point... Oh, she's back! Okay, no, 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 it's fine. She reset because she fell through the floor. Right, Amanta, no, we're doing this, all right? Now, a few more hits just to put her in this direction. There we go, straight back into that. And in just a second, as we pop Amanta down, the vault seals shut behind her, and Amanta is now out of the vault. Brilliant. Though at this point, she's kind of in a permanent aggressive state. Sadly, she will attempt to get back in the vault, and at some point, she will teleport back inside. This doesn't mean anything. It's just for fun. In which case, vault done. The proper adventure begins now. 
with one additional twist, which is uh, because this is Fallout New Vegas, Hardcore Mode is available. And we're going to be turning that on because one, Stimpak's healing over time. That's just, you know, much more reasonable that you can't just freeze time and heal in the infantry. That feels better to me. On top of that, yes indeed, Doctor's Bag's going to be needing them for any broken limbs. Right away, same deal, ammunition, picks up weight and... Uh, Yes, indeed. Water, hunger, tiredness, all the rest of it. And uh, given this game's main plot is about, you know, access to clean water, it kind of feels appropriate that I need to drink. So yes, we're turning that on. And here we go into the beauty of... Okay, that was a badly timed, you know, pop-up, but yes, indeed, obviously, we are going to be turning down all the stash packs from New Vegas. As I was saying, enjoying the beautiful scenery, etc, 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 and we get to level up. Now, you may notice, of course, we've got far fewer skill points than you might be expecting, because yes, we are playing by New Vegas rules. In Fallout 3, you've got skill points coming out of your ears. In New Vegas, you got slightly less. A slightly more reasonable number, to be honest. So, yes, I will happily take this number. That's a okay. Then we might boost it a bit down the line. We'll have to see. Now, what needs to go up? Guns being at 25. That would probably not be a bad thing. Lockpick moving towards 25. Actually, you know what? I can get science 25 right now. After that point, what's my priority? Medicine probably wouldn't hurt. Now, let's get lockpick moving in the right direction. That's a good starting point. And uh, here's where things get sexy. Because the perk systems uh, have been merged. But of course, plenty of them have had to be adjusted to fit into this new merged universe. So Danny's girl used to just give you a handful of skill points towards... Uh, yes, indeed, I think it was uh, science and medicine wasn't it so that's gone now basically all the perks that used to just give you a giant pile of skill points those are all gone and good they weren't particularly interesting they were very very boring i never took them instead now we've got new vegas style perks where the perks are actually you know unique things so cams are lasting 10 percent longer hacking gets a bit easier i don't know how precisely but somehow hacking's going to get easier Gun nut reduces spread, it means the item condition is better. Not a terrible idea, given I made it so items degrade faster in return for more crits. Hunter is... that's unchanged, I believe. Intense training is still there. Little Eager is, yeah, 10% damage with bats and nail boards. And grenades are harder and farther, not bad, really. Retention, that's the same as it was. Swift Learner, same, but Thief. Oh, now Thief is where things start getting... Uh, a bit on the sexy side. 10% bonus movement speed while sneaking. And also, bonus to pickpocket chance. Now, the movement speed alone is phenomenal. Absolutely phenomenal. And I will be taking that, but... First up, it has to be Black Widow. And I've got a very, very good reason for that, okay? We'll get to that. Oh, it's just nice to be back, isn't it? It's like seeing an old friend again. It's been so long since I've done a proper playthrough of Fallout 3. This old mailbox, of course. The grenades, the drugs stashed in here. And hang on. Which house is it? There we go. This safe right here. You're a good source of some early game stuff, aren't you? Oh, yeah. There's some drugs, including new drugs. New Vegas drugs, specifically. So... Yes, indeed, there are way more drugs in New Vegas. They've made their way here as well. And this is just the beginning. Like, there are just a million things that are going to be showing up in this game that are now all New Vegas-y. It's just my dear old friend, Fallout 3, but with New Vegas mechanics. And it's just... It's a marvel. It's a miracle, is what it is. That this just works. It's incredible. And here we go, right here outside Megaton... We've got our first brand new gun, or rather, well, I say brand new, single shotgun. Now, that's that's interesting. Shotguns in the early game of Vegas are kind of terrible, because against DT, they are absolutely hopeless. But 
when some enemies might just be using DR, shotguns might actually be, okay, things are going to start getting interesting and complicated fast. And also, that Raider armor is pretty good. Okay, it, um... It didn't take long for me to go over to Raider Armor. I have been somewhat corrupted by the Wasteland pretty bloody fast. And speaking of which, Crow, my friend, obviously, yes, you get a random selection of traders showing up outside Megaton. There's always one when you first arrive. Today, it's the Armor Trader Crow. Oh, that's much better. The lad selling leather armor. Okay, it's fine. My decline into being a raider has been halted because instead we're going to do the classic New Vegas thing. Nice early game leather armor. Brilliant. There we go. Trade him a pile of trash from the vault for a pile of a lovely leather armor. Put them together. Oh yeah. Now that. That'll do the job Yes, now I don't look like I'm here to rob the town anymore. Beautiful. But still, I would say as we are now back in the DC ruins at the start of what may be one of my biggest journeys ever, given it will cover the DC and the Mojave in one single playthrough, bloody hell I'd say that's enough for now, but it is so, so nice to be back in the world of Fallout 3. And next time... I am going to be putting that Black Widow perk to good use, shall we say, and diving into one of my favourite quests in all of Fallout history. And obviously, that's going to take us out into the wasteland where we're going to see just how different things are now that we're playing by New Vegas rules. But bloody hell, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you're looking forward to the rest of this because I most certainly am. And if you want to play along at home, Tale of Two Wastelands is completely free. It is a mod. You can download it right now. I will link to the site in the description down below. It is a bit complicated to get set up as you might expect, but I was able to do it. And if I can do it, you most certainly can too. So join me next week as our adventure kicks off in full. But in the meantime, I've been John. This has been many a true nerd. And this has been Fallout, Tale of Two Wastelands. Thank you very much, and goodbye. If we just hide the bodies, nobody needs to know about this. Yes! My stupid, stupid plan has worked! It turns out I'm a genius! The giant rat scorpion is not gone! Oh, hang on, there's, there's more yet, though. I'm still being very shocked. Guys, where's the NCR? Nobody needs to know.